Hey, how's it going? It's Lee Halliday, and we're here for part four of using a serverless function to generate an OG image, and we're deploying this to the ZeitNow serverless platform. So in part one of this, we started by creating a serverless function with which outputs some HTML. Part two, we took the query params and we made that HTML dynamic, and we applied a bit of styling to make it look nice. In part three, we wrote that HTML to a temporary file, and now that brings us to part four, where we're going to use a Chrome headless browser to render that HTML we wrote to a file and take a screenshot with it. And once we have that screenshot file, we can, instead of returning HTML, we can actually return an image, and that's what we want at the end of the day. So to get started with that, we'll bring up the code, and I've created a file called chromium.ts, which imports a couple um, a couple uh, packages we're going to need, the Chrome AWS Lambda. This is how we basically run the Chrome headless browser and Puppeteer Core, which is a library which helps you more easily use the uh, Chrome headless browser. And I'm using a Mac, so this is my sort of executable path to Chrome. So if you're using a Mac, you're probably good to just leave it as is. If you're on Windows or Linux, you'll have to update this to match your local environment. Okay, so to get started in this function, in this file, we're going to create a function called get screenshot. So we'll export it, export default. It's going to be async function called get screenshot. And this needs to receive a URL and is dev, which is a Boolean that tells us basically, are we in a dev environment or are we in sort of the deployed serverless environment? So URL is a string. Okay, so let's just stop here for a sec. Let's go figure out how do we know whether we're in the is dev environment or not. For that, we're gonna go back to card and we're gonna create a variable up here at the top called is dev. And what it's going to look at is an environment variable that is set by the now sort of local environment. I think it's actually on the server as well, which tells you which region this code is running in. And there's a specific region called dev one that the value is um, when you're running it on your computer. So it's process.env.now region, and we're gonna check if it's equal to dev1. So if it's equal to dev1, we know that we're in dev, otherwise we're going to assume that it's been deployed to the uh, ZeitNow platform. So once we have that variable, why don't we import the get screenshot function from Chromium, and we'll call it. So we'll come right below where we wrote our temporary H uh, file of HTML and we have the file URL. So let's call that right here. So we'll say get screenshot and we're going to pass in the file URL, which is the URL string. And then this is dev boolean. And why don't we say, ah, we'll just leave it like that for now and we'll start um, seeing what happens. So we have our URL and our is dev being passed here. So the first thing we need to do is basically using this Boolean, get some options that are used for launching um, the Chrome headless browser. So we'll create a new function, which will be an async one as well, called get options. And it's going to just take in this is dev Boolean. And we'll use that to to decide which set of options we want. Do we want this Chrome or do we want the one that's on uh, the AWS sort of serverless environment? Okay, so we're gonna say let options and we'll give it a type called options. Oh boy, there we go. So this doesn't exist yet, so let's just define it up here. So it's going to be an interface which will have a few things. The first one is args which is an array of strings. Next, we have the executable path, which will be a string. And lastly, we will have headless, which is a Boolean. Okay, so now that we have those, we're gonna have an if statement that checks if it's the dev environment. And if it is, we'll set the options to args will just be empty. Um, executable path will be this variable that we have above, and headless will be true. 
So now we got to handle the else scenario. So this is when we're on uh, the ZeitNow platform. So options will be equal to, and here it's almost a little bit easier. Here we just say chrome.args. The executable path is chrome.executable path. And the headless is chrome.headless. Okay, so it's giving an error, and that's because this thing right here returns a promise. So we just got to put a wait in there so that it works correctly. So now that we have all of that, we can return the options that we've created. So going back to our get screenshot function, we want to call this get options function and put them into a variable. So we can say const options equals await get options passing in is dev. And we don't need to define what type it is. Uh, TypeScript's smart enough to know that we're returning the options here, so we can leave it at that. So once we have our options, we need to call this launch function from Puppeteer Core, which gives us a browser. So we will await launch, giving it the options. And now we have a browser. So once we have the browser, we can ask the browser for a page. So we'll say const page equals await the browser to, what is it, new page, like that. So now we have a blank page that we can um, manipulate. The next thing we want to do to the page is basically set its size. So you can imagine hidden, it's opening up a Chrome browser. It's not visible anywhere, but it's being opened. And we need to set what size that is. It's width and its height. So we're going to say page dot um, set viewport. And here we can send in the width and the height. So if we go to the web, I found that the ideal sort of OG image size that Facebook recommends is 1200 by 630. So we'll put that in here, 1200 by 630. And once we've set the viewport, we can tell this page to go to a URL. So we'll say await page dot go to, and we'll pass in the URL. So this is the URL that basically points to our file system, to the temporary file that we wrote the HTML to. So lastly, we can return, finally, um, the screenshot that we're going to take on the page. So we can say page.screenshot, and here we pass in some options where we can tell it, do we want a PNG or a JPEG? I'm just doing a JPEG, so we'll say, um, take a JPEG, and I want the quality to be 100. Uh, we want it to look good when it's rendered, and Facebook or sort of whatever social site or Slack or Twitter, whatever you're sharing it to, is going to do their own resizing. So you don't really need to worry about that too much. So we're going to return this. And this is a promise, um, which when it resolves, will give us the actual image file. So I believe we're done at this point. Let's go back to card and let's put what get screenshot returns into a variable called file. So we'll say const file equals await the get screenshot. And we'll just console.log out to make sure it's working. It's probably going to be this massive, um, this massive piece of like binary junk we can't read, but let's go with it. Has no exported member get screenshot. Ah, maybe I did it default. So let's just export get screenshot and that works. Okay. So I'm just going to restart the now dev environment. Um, anytime I've been adding new files, sometimes TypeScript gives me some issues. So let's just try this out. We'll visit the page. We'll wait for it to sort of finish loading. Exited with a one. All right, let's try to figure out what this is. Puppeteer has no exported member browser fetcher. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to edit this so you won't notice this huge pause, but I ran into this error exited with one. And I think what was happening is I tried to upgrade Chrome AWS and Puppeteer Core to the latest versions. 
That was giving me some issues, so I modified this to 1.11.1 again. I've Yarn installed, I've restarted the server, and I'm going to load the page and hopefully that fixes the issue. I think the types file for Puppeteer Core is an older version that might not align with the latest version. So if this page loads, that was the issue, and we'll continue on, and as long as it works in this version, it's fine. There we go. So it still output the HTML, and you can see here this buffer, that's the actual file that was generated from the headless browser. So back here in card, we've now got this file, which is the actual image. So we're gonna make a few tweaks. Instead of um, ending with the HTML, we're gonna end with the file. And because we're actually outputting a JPEG now, we have to update this to be image slash JPEG. And we wanna set one additional header, which is how we can tell both the Zite Now environment, but also browsers who are gonna request this page, how to deal with the cache headers. So we'll say set header, and this will be cache control. And there's a few options we're gonna set. It's publicly available. It's immutable, meaning once it's been generated with a certain set of um, query params, it's not really ever gonna change. No transform. And now there's a couple ones where we can set the age that the cache should last. I don't think I need these commas here. Okay. So the first one is S max age. And you might've seen max age before, and that's what the browser knows basically how long to keep this cached version of the page for. And S max age is the server max age that Zite now will use to know how long to basically keep this file cached in their servers in their CDN. Because Zite now isn't just a serverless platform, it's actually a CDN. So the first time we, um, access a page, it's going to cache that in their CDN, which is a globally available CDN. And so on subsequent requests, it won't have to regenerate this image. It will actually just use the saved, the saved one. So we'll set it to 21,600. I think that's in seconds or days, but it's a pretty long time. And max age will be 21,600 as well. Okay, so what we did was we took a screenshot, put it in the file, updated the content type, and then set some cache controls. So if I load the page now, what I should be getting back is not the HTML this time, but the actual image, which is what we got. So now I've got an image where it, when it's scaled down, I'm seeing the dynamic OG image that I've been trying to generate. So the last step of this is just to commit it So we are generating the um, OG image, and we'll push that up to Zite now. So once that's finished deploying, um, we'll come back here to the deployments for this project, and it takes a little about about 15 or 20 seconds. Um, while it's building, oh there we go. We'll grab this URL here, and we'll come and we'll replace this one uh, with the localhost one with the actual one that's been deployed and about 20 seconds later when this turns green we're ready to go so we'll just wait for that you can actually click into here and you can see the build process that's going on so it will be done shortly no 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 Okay, we're ready. So now when I visit this URL, I am running this code and executing it on the serverless function. And when I refresh, see how fast that's going? That's because it's using that cache control header with the XS max age specifically, probably in combination with the browser max age to not regenerate this, but to just serve up the cached version. And with that, that finishes the four part series of using serverless functions on the Zite Now platform to generate dynamic uh, OG images. 
And in case you're interested, and this could be a separate video if people would like, if I go over to my blog, and I open up this up in VS Code, and then I go to the article itself. So inside my component called article, I'm receiving um, some information. Well, it's always me, it's always on my website, but the title of each article is different. And uh, the image as well is just one that I've got on the internet. So this little build URL function is using my version of the serverless function. It's uh, passing in some query arguments, which uh, this function up here is just turning into properly encoded URLs. And then down here, using helmet to put some uh, tags in the head. We've got some meta tags, the OG image, which is using this URL, and same with the Twitter image source using the same one. And that is how when you go to any page on my website, just React and Purity. We share this into Slack. It's reading my page, looking at the OG image, which is calling dynamically the um, serverless function, and it's producing this image here. That's it for this video. Thanks, and I hope you enjoyed this series. Take care. Bye.